What's going on, y'all? We're back with episode three of my Prop Firm Challenge documentary. Today is Tuesday, the 28th. Today has been pretty quiet. We had a uh, red folder news this morning, but it wasn't really anything too crazy. So let's head over to the charts and see what was going on. All right, so here's the midnight open. Here's the high between midnight and the 9.30 New York Stock Exchange open. And here's the low. As you can see, London session trended down. So yeah, nothing really going on too much in New York. As we can see, price has been moving pretty sideways. Nothing major. There was this big move here, going down and sweeping south side liquidity. Let's go take a look at NQ. Here's the midnight open. Here's the high between the midnight open and the 9.30 New York Stock Exchange open. And here's the low. The 9.30 open and immediately it swept to sell side liquidity and it's just been moving sideways, consolidating right here, came down. Now it's consolidating again. Here I noticed that we have SMT with, with Dow, with ES and NQ. So right now I'm just waiting to see if there's valid move to the upside for E-mini SMP or NQ. I'm looking for moves to the upside for both S ES and NQ because there's SMT with Dow as well as prices already swept the sell side liquidity for both tickers. And now all we're looking for is just big move to the upside with displacement and then trying to get in on that fair value gap. All right, so the price is starting to make its move. And now that I look at it, I'm seeing that lows are swept right here with this big move. And then it came up, gave us this swing high, came down gave us a swing low, gave us a higher high, and then it gave us a higher low. It didn't go below this. Now it's giving us this strong displacement and a fair value gap. I think I'm going to place a trade in here at this one minute for everybody up. And we'll be looking to fill the imbalance all the way up to here. So that is going to be my plan for now. All right, so we just put our order in. I'm going to mark up our three to one level. So there's our three to one level. The reason why I mark it is once it gets to our three to one level, then I'll move my stop loss up to either break even or just a little bit past break even for a little bit of profit. And I'm also going to mark out the 12 o'clock lunch. I want to be able to get in and out before that time, which should be doable if price gets us in fairly soon, but I just don't like trading through lunch. Price is very choppy and very slow during lunch most of the time. So we just want to avoid that. All right, we should be getting in soon. I think it's interesting how price came and touched this level three times and rejected three times. Hopefully we can get in soon. All right, we just got tagged in. So whenever we get tagged in, I like to move the beginning of this profit loss tool to where my entry was. And then I like to count out seven minutes and mark it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I marked out seven minutes right there and once price gets to the seven minute mark of being in the trade i like to reevaluate and see where we're at so most of the time i'll get out or if uh i think that i can trail the stop better and get a better exit then i'll do that instead of just getting out but yeah that's what i like to do so I'm just marking out what I see is going on. Price created a fair value gap right here within this candle and also this candle with a uh, price imbalance right here. <laughs> Meaning that there's a, I'm not sure if it's called price imbalance, but there's a gap right here between the close of the candle and the opening of the next candle. Now's a good time to move my stop loss up because there's fair value gaps that can hold. So I'm just gonna move my stop up to right here. There's also another fair value gap here. So there's three layers of fair value gaps that price can dip back into to create more buy pressure, meaning that if price comes down here, it should be able to bounce off 
like you see what it did right there it bounced off and made and wicked so it should be able to move higher and we have three layers of those so we're not really worried about getting stopped out unless price just blows through then then we'll be worried <laughs> but you see how price is respecting the fair value gap here hopefully the the candle closes outside of the fair value gap <laughs> that'll be a strong indicator yeah so I respected it we so just Typically, I wouldn't invalidate this fair value gap just because there was a wick in it. If the candle did close, like, I guess the candle did close inside of it a little bit, so we'll just invalidate this one for now. <clears throat> Move my stop loss up a little bit even more, too. I'd like to see this candle break above this candle. Oh, it didn't. I would like to see this candle break above. This huge candle, the 7 minute candle, usually is the one that breaks above if price is planning on going higher, so we shall see. Price is going towards our three to one level now, so we'll move this up. If price can close above, that'd be great, but it doesn't look like it's going to. We'll move this back down. If this candle can close above this level, then I will move my stop loss up towards over here. We will sell three out of our four contracts if price gets up to the four to one level, and then we'll let the, the last contract ride out until until the five to one level, or until lunch pops in. Usually, once price gets to the three to one level, I usually just close out the trade and take the profit, but today I'm going to try something different. I am going to trust my analysis a little bit better and let price try to fill in this imbalance. Hopefully we can get there before lunch starts. If not, if price is still ranging around this area by the time lunch comes, then I'll just close out the trade. But I wanna see price be able to move into this territory. And I'm only gonna take partials if it gets to the four to one area. I'm not gonna take partials if it gets to the three to one area, only on the four to one area. So that um, if I take the partials here at the four to one and then let, let it ride out to the five to one, it'll be like a 4.5 our trade because if I take if I take profits here and it doesn't get to up here then it'll be less than a three yard trade but we'll see what happens look at how perfect these equal highs are right here and then just hopefully price can close above it it broke past it though but so that's a good sign so hopefully you can close above these three perfect equal highs right here <laughs> Yes, sir. There's a few more seconds until this candle will close, so hopefully it can close above. If it does, we'll move our stop up. <laughs> oh, it didn't. It didn't do it, but let's see if this candle can go even higher. If it does, it'll leave a fair value gap, and then we can put our sell stop under the fair value gap. I missed the, the exit right here, but if price goes back up there again, then I'm ready for the exit. I'm gonna sell, sell off three of my contracts if price goes back up there again. Notice how price went into this fair value gap and rejected. If the fair value gap can close, or if price can close above the fair value gap, then I'll be happy. If not, if price closes in the fair value gap or after it, uh, if price closes after the fair value gap below here, then I'll be worried and I'll probably just close out and take profits. But price should respect it. See, so price closed above the fair value gap. All right, I just closed out my trade. I just made a, a last minute decision that I was just going to close it out at a four to one instead of letting price move higher. I know I went against what I was saying. I was saying that I was going to sell off three of my contracts and let the one ride out, but we've been in the trade for way too long. I don't like being in trade for longer than 10 minutes. I'm going to not be greedy. I'm going to take the four to one. Yeah, it was a good start to the day right before lunch. So now that I'm done with the trade, I'm going to go ahead and journal my trade. Two fifty 
to 290.114 plus how much do we make today? 2027.68 Alright y'all, so I just finished logging in my trade to my trade journal and um, one thing that I didn't mention earlier was I was using a breaker entry. So I used this black candle right here as the breaker. And as you can see, As you can see, it was a perfect price literally came into our breaker and it just got us in barely right there and it didn't go a tick lower. If I was uh, more confident in my breaker entries, I would have set the stop loss right here and or even like right here. And it could and this could have been an 8, 8.2 trade or a 10 R trade, but I just used the stop loss past the fair value gap candle, which was like right here. And we ended up getting a four to one. but. Yeah, so that was this was like kind of my first breaker entry. It, it was in the fair value gap, so I don't know if that counts as a breaker or not. But I, I wanted to use this to get like a like a better entry instead of putting my entry right here, which would have also worked. But this worked, and then I also could have put my stop loss up here. But like I said, I didn't. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. As you can see, price is starting to reverse now. It went up a little bit higher, but our were five to one didn't get up here. So I'm glad that I took my profits where I did. I was able to get like a 4.1 trade right there and we're gonna go have some breakfast and then we'll be back later uh, after lunch